Hey everybody. Today we're talking about moment generating functions, focusing on discrete random variables. Let's start out with an important mathematical definition. The kth moment of a probability distribution about the value x equals c is defined like this. The expected value of x minus c to the k. Here we're taking k to be some positive integer. Now on its face this definition is pretty abstract and gets more real when we start looking at specific values for c and k. When k equals 1 and c equals 0, we just get the expected value. The first central moment of a probability distribution is just the mean of that distribution. For higher values of k, we typically take c to be that expected value. In other words, centering our moment around the expected value of the distribution. In that case, when k equals 2, we're looking at an expression for variance, the expected value of x minus mu quantity squared. When k equals 3, we get skewness, and when k equals 4, we have kurtosis. So the kth moment of a probability distribution is potentially interesting to us for different values of k. Let's drill down into this expression a little bit more, the expected value of x minus c to the k. x minus c to the k is going to be a polynomial. We can expand that out just by foiling it. And of course, the expected value operator is linear, so we can break up a polynomial. To say this in, um, or to summarize this, we can always write um, the expected value of x minus c to the k, the kth moment, as a sum of multiples of the various expected values of x to the i, where i is 1, 2, 3, and so on. Let's make this a little bit more real by looking at the case k equals 2 and c equals mu, in other words, looking at variance. Variance, the expected value of x minus mu quantity squared, um, can be rewritten as the expected value of x squared minus 2 mu times the expected value of x plus mu squared. Again, just by foiling out the x minus mu quantity squared and then breaking up the expected value of the sum as the sum of expected values. Finally, notice that mu is the expected value of x. So this middle expression can be rewritten as the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. It's already clear that we're going to want a systematic way for calculating the expected value of x to the i, for i is any positive integer. The moment generating function gives us exactly a method for that. Here's the definition. m of t is the expected value of e to the tx, where e is just the exponential, exponential number, as you'd expect. And t is essentially a dummy variable here. If x is discrete, we can write this moment generating function, m of t, like this, e to the xi times t times f of xi, where the xi's range over the sample space of the random variable x, and f is the probability mass function. In other words, you give me an xi value, I give you back the probability of that xi. Again, that's pretty abstract. Let's see a specific example. Here's a pretty simple random variable, x. It has four um, possible outcomes, 3, 4, 8, and 10, and probabilities 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0 0.2, respectively. Following that definition from the previous slide, we get this moment generating function, 0.3e to the 3t plus 0.3e to the 4t, and so on. Notice the format here. The coefficients are the probabilities of the different outcomes, and the exponents are the outcomes themselves times t in each case. Now, one other thing to notice here is that if we take the derivative of that and plug in 0, we get 0 0.3 times 3 plus 0.3 times 4 plus 0.2 times 8 plus 0.2 times 10, just the expected value of the random variable. Each one of those terms in m of t, um, when we differentiate, gives us the probability times the value. And then, of course, we add all of those up, so just the expected value. In fact, this is always the case as long as that moment generating function is differentiable in the neighborhood of t equals 0. m prime of 0 is always the expected value. m double prime of 0 then is the expected value of x squared, and so on. The kth derivative of the moment generating function evaluated at 0 is always the kth zero centered moment of that distribution. This is helpful because it's frequently much easier to determine mu and um, 
sigma squared, the mean and variance, using the moment generating function than to compute them directly. This is also true for skewness and kurtosis. Let's see this with a more complicated example. Suppose x has a geometric distribution, that is, it's a discrete random variable with this probability mass function. f of x equals q to the x minus 1 times p, where x can be 1, 2, 3, and so on. p is between 0 and 1, that's the probability of success on any given Bernoulli trial. q is 1 minus p, that's the probability of failure on any given Bernoulli trial. Here, x is modeling the number of trials needed until the first success when we're doing repeated Bernoulli trials. Using that definition from the previous slide, from a couple slides ago, the moment generating function, sum from x equals 1 to infinity e to the tx, f of x, becomes this, just literally plugging and chugging. e to the tx, q to the x minus 1 times p. Next, I'm going to factor out p over q so that the entire inside of that summation um, is something to a power of x. Rewriting it using that fact, I get p over q times the sum from x equals 1 to infinity, qe to the t to the x power. This is helpful because we now have a geometric series. The ratio is qe to the t, and the initial term when x equals 1 is also qe to the t. So assuming that geometric series converges, which is the case when t is less than negative ln of q, we get the sum um, just of that geometric series to be qe to the t over 1 minus qe to the t. And of course, we still have that factor of p over q out front. This gives us a closed form for our moment generating function. Here it is simplified just a tiny bit. The moment generating function for an exponential distribution is pe to the t over 1 minus qe to the t. Okay, let's put this moment generating function to work. Let's compute the expected value and variance of the geometric distribution. We take a derivative using the quotient rule with respect to t, of course, and then plug in 0 and simplify to get um, that m prime of 0, the expected value of the random variable here, is p over 1 minus q quantity squared. Of course, as you would expect, all of the t's are gone at the end of this calculation. The expected value of the random variable x should not depend on t. That was just a dummy variable that we introduced. Similarly, um, or let's quickly interpret this. If the expected value of the geometric distribution is 1 over p, that means that we expect, on average, to need 1 over p attempts until the first success, which makes sense. If um, the probability of um, an outcome is 1 in 10, you predict you need 10 outcomes on average for the first occurrence of that event. Now let's compute um, the variance. Let's get the expected value of x squared by taking the second derivative of the moment generating function. Here it is, done again just using the quotient rule and some algebraic simplification. And then I'm plugging in 0. So um, when we do that, plugging in 0, we get p times 1 minus q over 1 minus q quantity cubed. Using the fact that q is 1 minus p, this can be simplified a little bit. We get 1 plus q over p squared. Now we're ready to calculate variance using the formula that we saw a few slides ago. The variance is going to be the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x quantity squared. Plugging in the values we already computed and simplifying, we get the variance of the geometric distribution. It's q over p squared. The standard deviation then is the square root of this, square root of q over p.